Mexico City is undoubtedly the center of business and trading activity for the country. The city has a population of over 9 million and is responsible for approximately 16% of the entire country's GDP. And if you include the entire metro area, that's a total of 22 million people and about 22% of the country's GDP. In fact, if Mexico City itself was a country, it would have one of the largest economies in the entire Latin America. Mexico City's altitude is just as high as the city's economy is booming. It may not be the highest city in the world, but it's definitely up there. The city is nestled in a valley at over 2,300 meters of altitude. It's surrounded by volcanoes and mountains that reach over 5,000 meters in altitude. Before becoming the Mexico City that we know today, it was called the Aztec City of Tenochtitlan, which rests atop a lake. Over time, the city's drainage was redirected to canals and tunnels. And while no more lake water is flowing underneath the artificial island today, the city remains on top of the old lake's soft base. What's more, the Greater Mexico City features the 700 hectare Chapultepec Park. It's the second largest city park in Latin America, with over 15 million visitors each year taking in its sights and surroundings. It's home to multiple museums, amusement parks, lakes, fountains, and sculptures. The urban park also features Chapultepec Castle, which currently doubles as the Nation History Museum. So, we have a massive population, a booming economy, a high altitude, and a pristine valley location to its cultural relevance and legacy. But something is missing. Skyscrapers. If you take a step back and study the urban planning of Mexican cities, you might notice the consistency in the lack of skyscrapers amidst urban sprawl. If you look closer, however, you'll see the presence of some skyscrapers. There's just not a lot of them. So why are there no skyscrapers in Mexico City and surrounding cities, especially when cities around the globe are in a race to build the tallest buildings? How can Mexico City, a city full of life and bustling with the dynamic nature of locals and tourists alike, end up having a landscape predominantly made up of low-rise buildings in an urban sprawl? The short answer is because of the land it's built on. Mexico City rests on top of a former lake bed, which is not the best foundation for sky-high buildings. Sure, it's well kept, but it's still a soft and muddy former lake bed. So, it would be a huge risk and, quite frankly, irresponsible to build multiple skyscrapers on it. Of course, we also have to mention that Mexico City experiences more than its fair share of earthquakes every year. And while these earthquakes are relatively mild, the constant occurrences could take a toll on building structures, even with all the resources in the world to build colossal skyscrapers in Mexico City, it might not be the most suitable location because it is a seismic or earthquake prone zone. Now let's dive into a more thorough discussion of the challenges that come with building skyscrapers in Mexico City. What's with the lack of skyscrapers in Mexico? Well, it's worth noting that as a whole, 80% of the Mexican population lives in urban areas. You'll find a lot of houses whether you're in Mexico City or surrounding cities. So why not just build more high-rise apartments and condominiums, you ask? Due to the geographical location, Architects and engineers in Mexico City are taking a slow and steady approach to skyscraper design and building. For public safety and building integrity, architects and engineers need to understand what they're dealing with before making a city of skyscrapers. Well, a deadly earthquake rocked Mexico City yesterday. The 7.6 magnitude earthquake devastated the capital, shattering windows, cracking walls, and collapsing buildings. This is the third deadly quake to strike on September 19th in the last 40 years. Let's talk about Mexico's geography, particularly how it's an earthquake zone and how this affects the local architecture. Mexico experiences approximately 30,000 earthquakes every year. As you can imagine, most of these quakes are mild enough for people to carry on with their day. However, Mexico is no stranger to devastating earthquakes that result in building collapses and thousands of fatalities. One example is the 1985 Mishoacan earthquake, which caused catastrophic damage, countless injuries, and death across Mexico City. The magnitude 8.0 earthquake reduced buildings into rubble, cut off traffic lights and public transit, 
damaged telephone lines, and rendered Mexico City incommunicado for days. It left 250,000 people without shelter and resulted in an official death toll of 10,000. With this example still fresh in the minds of many Mexicans, it makes sense why low-rise buildings remain predominant in the metro. So what exactly does this mean for the future of skyscrapers in Mexico City? Can architectural innovations address the city's geographical challenges and allow local architecture to add more skyscrapers in a sea of low-rise buildings? Well, it's hard to say just how many skyscrapers the city can accommodate in the near future. However, architectural plans that have already been approved no doubt need major structural engineering to ensure a stable, quake-resistant foundation. In what ways are construction codes and architectural technologies addressing the earthquake concern in Mexico City? Unsurprisingly, the aftermath of catastrophic earthquakes has resulted in new construction codes to ensure that building structures are stable and more resistant to natural disasters. These codes are constantly updated based on the changing landscape and developing technologies and innovations in the construction field. Let's take a look at the 225-meter Torrey Manor, for example. The skyscraper was built in 1999 and completed in 2003, and it stands in the area where the deadly 1985 earthquake occurred. But the building was constructed with a series of 96 dampers, which are essentially huge shock absorbers that dissipate seismic energy from the lake bed. Torrey Manor's dampening system provides optimal bracing against earthquakes and proved effective when a 7.6 magnitude earthquake hit the city in 2003. The skyscraper was left undamaged, and the people inside barely noticed the tremor. It didn't take any notable damage either during another significant earthquake back in 2017. More than a decade after Torrey Manor was completed, the 246-meter Torrey Reforma took over as the tallest building in Mexico City at that time. Its engineers arranged pre-tensioned hangars in a double V-shaped formation around the facade to ensure its stability despite resting on top of an infamously seismic zone. Meanwhile, Tory BBVA Bancomer's engineers used a braced megaframe system to boost its resistance against earthquakes and other lateral forces. The seismic joints and perimeter columns that make up these systems allow the buildings to be almost ductile and elastic when earthquakes occur. Their deep foundations and supporting pillars could reach as far down as 50 meters into the ground to take the brunt of earthquake forces and absorb most of that seismic energy. That being said, architects and engineers have their work cut out for them. To ensure earthquake-safe structures, there's much more work to be done than simply digging deep for a solid skyscraper base. The buildings inside Mexico City rest on top of what is essentially very soft clay instead of solid rock. So how do we work around this and ensure safe builds? One solution is to build an entirely concrete structure that would result in optimal rigidness. This would need a huge amount of concrete during construction though. Decades ago, it wouldn't have been a major issue. But because Mexico has been facing serious drought and severe water crisis, one of the main ingredients of concrete remains scarce. This majorly limits structural planning and slows down construction. So, when we combine the existing ground conditions, the constant occurrence of earthquakes, the limited space, and the water shortage, it's understandable why it's difficult to build skyscrapers in Mexico City. But again, we reiterate that architecture and engineering are constantly innovating. So, who's to say what comes next? We don't want to say it's an impossible feat, but it would be difficult to transform Mexico City into a town of skyscrapers simply because of its geographical composition. The city is built over a lake and in an earthquake zone. Together, these factors pose a great challenge for building strong, stable, and sturdy skyscrapers in the city. Who knows what the future holds for architecture, construction, and structural engineering in Mexico City? Architects, engineers, and contractors have to deal with environmental elements, seismic zones, not-so-stable conditions, city congestion, and the lack of some key resources, after all. But they, along with the construction crews, are not letting immense geographical challenges get in their way of actualizing their vision. Someday, whether that's years or centuries from now, Mexico City might just be known as a city of skyscrapers. 
Only time and technological innovations can tell. Thanks for sticking around and stay tuned for more content.